But anyway, without further ado, we want to bring uh, Beatriz on. Um, she is a visiting professor at the Nordic Institute of Theoretical Physics at Stockholm University. Again, she's the lead scientist on the VASCO project. Um, and she's recently um, published in preprints uh, three or four articles on her research on transients, which um, show potentially remarkable results. Um, and, you know, look, we can have an amazing conversation about this because it's, it's, it's cutting edge research that whatever one thinks of it should, should uh, be fascinating. And it'll generate um, even more discussion than it has already. It's, it's making headlines right now, and, uh, I, and we think it will continue to. So anyway, Beatriz, um, welcome. And, you know, sorry to, to give a kind of introduction that could, could make someone nervous. But, you know, as you know, a lot of us <laughs> think the world of you and your, your work. Thanks. So to kick things off, I want to ask you, um, you know, how you got into this line of inquiry in astronomy. It's, it's, it's very unusual. It's very innovative to want to link, um, uh, you know, the potential of UAP or objects that would create techno signatures to the study of transients. Um, and, and also to look back at very old astronomical data. I, I think most astronomers don't do that. Um, so how'd you get into this? So it's actually a long story. So I was a PhD student and I was like writing short stories or fables. And I was writing this story about a quasar. Well, it was, was well, I will not dig into the details. No, no, tell us. You, you were saying you were writing fiction <laughs> well, or science, I was enjo science fiction. I was enjoying the that kind of stuff when I was a student or PhD student. And then when I finished it and I killed off my poor quasar and, uh, well, it, I mean, unintentionally, but it, it, it happened to the poor quasar. And I just wondered like, can an object just vanish? Can a star vanish? Has anyone ever looked for vanishing objects? And uh, it, it was just from a fable, to just this idea. And then the first one year passed and I didn't know how to check that. Two years passed, I didn't know how to check that. And on the fourth year of my PhD studies, I finally learned about the US Naval Observatory catalog, US No catalog. And uh, that is from the fifties. And I said, oh my God, this is my opportunity to check if any object or any galaxy ever vanished. So it was a, just a crazy thing that I was like curious about and I wanted to check. And then I learned about the concept of failed supernova, that some stars could collapse directly into black holes uh, without emitting a bright supernova. And I was just excited. Okay, let's go, let's go and look for this. So uh, we did a pilot study. Uh, so me with two bachelor students, we tried to look for it. We found some kind of candidate and it wasn't fantastic. Other people thought also, oh, this could be Dyson spheres if you find things that vanish. So there was a connection both to like just a fundamental idea, can something just vanish and um, failed supernova, but also these uh, techno signatures research. It was a, I mean, there is a cross section between different fields of astronomy. So it was a fun thing. And then uh, I, I met a um, senior scientist who said, okay, let's do it in a real way. Let's actually do it like uh, with the whole sample and I kind of thought it was cool. And in uh, 2017, 2018, we started thinking about how do we do this with a complete sample? And uh, we started, uh, well, working with cross-matching, again, the US Naval Observatory catalog to the PANSTARS, to the SDSS. And then we came to a moment where I had 150,000 candidates um, from the US Naval Observatory catalog that couldn't be found in the modern ones. And this was diluted down to uh, like 15% of the sample because it's too big to handle. So we took 15%. And that means 24,000 candidates that I had to look through one by one. Yes, I looked through alone 24,000 candidates, like small image cutouts. And among these, we found 100 transients. And these hundred transients appear to uh, appear like appeared and vanished within one plate exposures. You see one star in the fifties that you cannot find again. And we published a paper on this. We didn't know what it was. We were wondering like what something short lived, what could that be? 
And then uh, after we had published this study, I decided to do a follow-up and follow-up analysis. And I discovered that on one of these images, I had nine of them, not one, nine things that appeared and vanished. And I was like, what is this? And of course, you try to analyze, you try to, to understand it in the best way possible. And we there arrived at two possible explanations, maybe some kind of weird contamination of the plates that all, for whatever reason, produce star-like objects that all have star-like brightness profiles, because we also did diagnostics, we measured the star, uh, the, the, uh, the brightness profiles of the stars. Or it is maybe some kind of uh, reflections in space from something artificial. However, these images were from before Sputnik 1. So then the next paper, our 2022 paper, is a suggestion on how to separate between these two cases, uh, where you not only look for multiple objects, but you also look for those that are aligned in order to search for the best po possible uh, candidates to be actually an artifact of something non-human that is in space. So that's, it, it, it's just like, one question yeah, that, that's, led that's to the really, other. That's really quite a uh, evolution, you know. It, it's it, it that it started with with fiction or science fiction, um, and it really was just uh, you, you started with a very kind of uh, basic and innocent question about whether an object could vanish, and and, mm -hmm. and you made it to this um, uh, strange possible discovery of of seeing nine uh, transients where, where mm -hmm. you thought you would see zero or one. Mm -hmm.